Welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, the podcast that helps aircraft owners and aviation businesses learn and understand the complex world of aviation insurance and risk management. From the basic principles of aviation insurance to risk management techniques and updates on the aviation insurance market, the Aviation Insurance Podcast is your guide to traverse the world of aviation insurance. Now, here's your host, Tim Bonnell. Well, welcome to the Aviation Insurance Podcast, where we talk about the fundamentals of aviation insurance. And today, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the broad form expansion endorsements that will be issued by some carriers on various insurance policies. And today, I'm going to reference uh, some that are definitely going to be on some pleasure and business use policies. Those are the policies for uh, light aircraft that are used uh, for for personal and incidental business travel where no charge is made. Some of those policies, if you look at past episodes, uh, will allow for some reimbursement, but in general, uh, this is not a commercial use type of policy. And some insurance carriers will have the basic policy. We've talked about DICE, the declarations, the insuring agreements, conditions, and exclusions sections, along with some some definitions and endorsements, but some of them will have a broad form um, expansion endorsement that gives a host of other coverages uh, to the policyholder uh, within the policy. Not all policies do this. Not all insurance companies uh, will do it. It depends on the circumstances. But here are some of those broad form uh, expansion coverages that you may see on one of these uh, broad form endorsements. Uh, So the first is an interesting coverage. It's called the aircraft value appreciation coverage. And what this does in, in simple terms is say, hey, if you know we agreed on the value at the beginning of the insurance policy, and if during that uh, time the value of the aircraft appreciated to a, a higher um, value uh, at the time there was a total loss, then they will pay up to what's stated in the policy uh, for that particular amount within a given time. So again, this is, is time-driven. Uh, it is just meant to say that, look, if, if in the last 90 days um, uh, or so, whatever the time period is, the aircraft is appreciated since we did this, we will increase the value. Again, uh, we'll increase the uh, the total loss to that value. But again, there are various different uh, stipulations there, but it is an interesting uh, coverage that some carriers may provide. On a similar note, some may have an automatic uh, increased uh, coverage for an increase in insured value. And again, this will be a certain percentage, uh, provided that this change was in the last 30 or 60 days, depending on the policy. It just It's kind of like when you buy a new car, they give you so many days to report uh, that change. And so what this does is say, if you had some modifications, you put in a new uh, panel, a new GPS, whatever that might be, a new engine, uh, within the last 30 days, they'll automatically increase the insured value uh, via this endorsement uh, to the to the amount that is stipulated. Oftentimes that'll be a percent. They'll, they'll increase by a certain percent, but that's nice. Obviously it's better to report things up front, but these are two nice little features uh, just uh, designed to offer a little bit of a window to make those changes. Another expansion coverage you might find is coverage for uh, baggage or, or, or even hangar. Um, sometimes they'll stipulate a small amount. Maybe it's $2,500 each passenger. Maybe it's 3000 5000 and then maybe a small amount for um, contents of the hangar. Again, this could be worded a little bit different, but um, uh, basically sometimes people have other uh, people's suitcases or something in the care cost to control the, uh, of the insured. And so there's a little bit of coverage thrown in for that baggage and hangar content coverage. And again, this will all be defined by the policy, what is baggage and what is covered there. Uh, another interesting one is an emergency or some might call it an off-field unexpected landing uh, coverage. And basically it will, this endorsement will cover those costs uh, to reasonably uh, disassemble or remove an aircraft from the place of the emergency or unexpected landing, right? We, we put down in a field and, and it's going to take some effort and energy to pull it out of the field uh, and uh, get that back into some sort of safe storage so those extra costs that come with that is uh, extended via this coverage on some policies. Some policies will include uh, some equipment coverage, throw in a little bit for your headsets or safety equipment, maybe some spare parts. Again, on a pleasure and business use policy, this will be pretty minimal, but it's a nice little coverage to have. 
And uh, again, the policy will define exactly what those are. Uh, some will include uh, under the broad form endorsement policy uh, coverage for non-owned aircraft. Uh, we talk about non-owned aircraft coverage and some of the issues with that in, a, in an earlier episode. So refer back to uh, the podcast website or uh, your podcast player to check out our episode on non-owned coverage. But some of the pleasure and business use policies will afford non-owned coverage here. Also, they may afford a coverage for extra expense for renting substitute aircraft. So if your aircraft is damaged uh, and it's going to take extra expenses to rent an aircraft over what you would have paid, uh, it will provide a certain uh, limit per day and per the occurrence uh, related to that aircraft. But it's going to take you more uh, to go out and replace the use of that aircraft by renting another one. It gets you a little bit of coverage here. Again, a nice little coverage um, to be included. Several policies will include a hurricane protection or hurricane relocation coverage. Uh, just saying that, and again, it'll stipulate if, if there's a hurricane watch or warning within a specific radius, it could be within 100 miles, uh, then they will pay you up to a certain amount to relocate your aircraft out of the uh, way of potential damage. So if you're in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, and you relocate the aircraft um, at least 100 miles away to uh, to Tampa, uh, I mean, from Tampa to uh, Atlanta, for instance, then they would pay uh, a certain amount to help reimburse that expense. It's in everyone's best interest to get that aircraft out of the way of damage. And so they want to help in that process. So again, each in, each company may, that includes this coverage may have a different limit and a different time period, uh, but check out your policy. That's a nice little feature if you're uh, in a coastal area or you're flying in the uh, somewhere in the path of a hurricane. Um, Again, there are a number of other coverages that we might find, uh, including runway foaming. Uh, it can get expensive if, if uh, aircraft, um, uh, the fire department for the airport, the uh, uh, crash and, and fire response unit has to go out and foam the runway. So some of them will have a runway foaming um, endorsement in here, giving you a little bit of coverage for uh, that type of exposure. Also, uh, on this, in the same breath for search and rescue. So if uh, yeah, aircraft doesn't come up uh, where it's supposed to be and uh, uh, search and rescue efforts launched, uh, some of these policies will have a coverage that will reimburse some of those expenses uh, per day or per occurrence of a search and rescue effort uh, set out to, uh, to locate the missing aircraft. Uh, another one real quick is temporary replacement aircraft parts. Again, if there's a a temporary uh, replacement part needed. This insurance policy that has one of these endorsements will extend some coverage to pay up to a certain limit um, uh, for each occurrence to help you acquire uh, temporary parts in order to get the aircraft op uh, operating while uh, the parts under repair. For instance, if there's damage to the engine, the uh, covered loss, and you need to lease or rent an engine for a period of time, this coverage could potentially pay up to the limit for helping to reimburse the cost of that uh, temporary replacement aircraft. And again, uh, there's a lot of um, nuances to these different policies and endorsements. So you have to read it. I'm just giving you a very brief overview. Uh, there are some other interesting endorsements that some carriers may have uh, that would include one is rental to name pilots. So a lot of policies don't cover rental that are pleasure in business. A couple of them will have an endorsement that will allow for rental uh, to the actual named pilots, pilots who have been approved by, submitted to the carrier, approved by, and named on the policy may be able to provide a, pay a rental fee, uh, again, subject to the terms and conditions of the insurance policy. But that's a neat little endorsement some insurance carriers have that not everyone does, but uh, you may find that under the broad form expansion coverage. So Anyway, that's, that's all I'm going to get into today. This is just a highlight of some of these extra little coverages you may find on some pleasure and business use insurance policies and some uh, corporate type of insurance policies. Well, that's all for this episode. Join us again next time as we continue navigating the waypoints in aviation insurance. Until then, enjoy clear skies and unlimited visibility. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Insurance Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share it with someone who would benefit from this information. Don't forget to subscribe in your podcast player so you don't miss any new episodes and to help our show have more impact. 
This episode is brought to you by Aris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence of aviation insurance. For more information, visit arisinsurance.com. That is www.aerisinsurance.com. Disclaimer. These episodes are for educational purposes only, and due to the changing regulatory and legal nature of the business, some information may change over time. Having a well-educated and experienced aviation insurance broker on your team is an absolute requirement to success in business and for managing your aircraft and aviation business risks.